Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Home Tech Markets. Each week I take you through the key events that I'll be driving your investments in the coming days. Now, this week it's all about the data. We've got a, a raft of key tier one economic data out of the States which could well have an impact on Fed monetary policy in the coming months. Now, uh, ever since the Fed removed the word patient from its statement, uh, it now becomes d data dependent, I think, in terms of the Fed and uh, what it's going to do with its monetary policy. Jeanette Yellen tried on Friday to just calm a little bit of expectations by sort of um, suggesting that the Fed was in no rush to uh, hike rates and also uh, as and when it uh, came to the tightening cycle, there was no need to do it in a quick fashion. Um, but there's still uh, central bankers um, that uh, certainly Fed members that are coming out with speeches that are now potentially driving market sentiment. Certainly Dennis Lockhart last week, a dove giving a bit of a hawkish lean on his statement certainly didn't um, didn't help the markets. And certainly there's now an expectation um, that uh, this dollar uh, strength that we've seen in the recent months is the big story. Whether it continues, whether it corrects or not, um, is the big question now. We've seen since the Fed meeting we had the dollar correcting, uh, but it's now showing signs of that correction sort of turning into more of a consolidation and perhaps even resuming dollar strength. Now we're seeing on such um, instruments such as the euro, gold and oil, all of these coming back in the dollar's favour in recent days. And it'd be interesting to see what the impact of this data that we have out this week will have. Now, I'm looking at the uh, US 10-year Treasury as a bit of a telltale because um, around about 2% seems to be a big pivot level on that. And if you start to see the 10-year Treasury moving above 2%, I think that could suggest that the dollar is going to regain a bit of initiative once more to the upside. Now, in terms of the, the Forex markets, well, certainly Euro is the big mover um, and uh, whether that now breaks back below or not because it's it's coming back towards a level support band between 107.66, 108 big figure and that is the support that needs to hold to prevent this dollar rally continuing. Uh, it's back below 109 figure and I think that was again a bit of a pivot level on the euro dollar so some uh, some interesting moves seen on the euro and that uh, could be a uh, could be seen to be having a big key breakout this week either way. On cable, uh, it's interesting because cable uh, the cable rally never really got going and uh, under $1.50 big figure seemed to be the constant resistance line that it continued to fail to rally up, um, up above. Now we're seeing uh, cable trading in more of a bit of a, a consolidation really, about 200 pip band between 148 and 150. Um, but it certainly seems as though the momentum indicators and the technicals are suggesting an, an eventual downside break. The other key factor is we're entering into a key time for sterling in terms of the UK economy and the general election coming up on May the 7th. So um, volatility is likely to increase on cable in the coming weeks. And on Dolly Yen, there's been an interesting move on Dolly Yen today. Dollar strength has resumed on Dolly Yen, breaking back above 119 spot 40. That is a, an interesting move in a, and a push above a key pivot level there. If it can start to build on this support between 118.90 and 119.40, then you can start to see potentially the bulls pushing above 120 big figure. And I think if it can get above 120, then that again would be another sign of dollar strength coming along. These are all key levels that we're looking out for this week. Now, in terms of the indices, it's really interesting because we're seeing on Wall Street and the DAX, um, we're seeing both of those uh, uh, markets moving in negative correlation with the local currency. Certainly, whenever Wall Street sees dollar strength, um, it, Wall Street sees a bit of uh, con corrective pressure. Similarly, with the DAX, we saw the the, um, the euro starting to roll over a little bit, and we see and we saw the DAX. Um, resuming its uptrend uh, in, in the last couple of days. But certainly when the euro is strengthening, as it had done post FOMC, the, there was a bit of a corrective pressure on the DAX. So we're looking out for supports on the S&P 500 around 2040 to 2060 and on the DAX, just above that 11,600 mark at the moment. In terms of FTSE, it's a bit of a different story because it's so highly weighted in, um, in oil stocks and also basic resources but we're still looking out for a fairly choppy element of uh, support that comes in and so, so you'd still be probably erring towards the buying into dips on FTSE and there's some, some nice support between 6,700 and 6,800.
So onto gold, as I said, we're beginning to see the gold price rolling over as the dollar has started to strengthen again. It's back below 1200 bucks. And I think now you'd be looking out for the support at 1185. If that starts to go, then that reopens a lot, whole lot of supports on the downside. And it'll be interesting to see if the, uh, these levels are tested. So what are we looking out for in terms of the economic calendar in the coming week? As I said, a lot of key tier one economic data. The um, personal consumption expenditure in, uh, data on Monday is the Fed's preferred measurement of inflation in the States. And if that starts to pick up, that would be a hawkish move uh, or hawkish lean. And then on Tuesday, we've got the Eurozone flash CPI. Now we're having the German flash data uh, on Monday and uh, it's starting to sort of pick up again and maybe there is signs of stabilization in uh, in the Eurozone deflation as it starts to pull back. Uh, looks like it's going to be coming back towards 0.1% potentially um, and uh, you could start to see this Eurozone inflation starting to bottom out. On Wednesday, we've got the big PMI data across the world. The ISM uh, manufacturing data is one of the key tier one economic data for the UK, uh, for the US, and uh, certainly the markets will be looking out for any signs of stabilisation at the moment. We're still seeing the um, ISM data um, falling away. Four months in a row, it's been falling. It's expected to do a fifth month uh, um, when the data comes out on Wednesday. But if it starts to stabilise and maybe even pick up, then that again would be a dong, uh, dollar strength signal. And then on Friday, we've got that all-important non-farm payrolls data. Expectations are for 245,000 jobs to be um, to be uh, gained in the States in the month of March. And it'll be interesting to see if, uh, if that again comes out strongly, because the last few months have been really indicative of the dollar strength and uh, expectations have been beat, and that has driven a dollar strong move. Um, and uh, obviously the markets will also be looking out for the average hourly earnings as well, which uh, stayed, rem uh, stayed pretty flat around about 2% for the year. Um, and uh, we need to see signs of that probably picking up before the, the Fed um, can hike interest rates. Anyway, I wish you good luck in your trading throughout this week. Lots going on. And uh, obviously the UK is on holiday for Good Friday, um, but uh, the States isn't. So uh, still trading will be going on. Anyway. Good luck with your trading and I'll speak to you next week. Thank you.